It's wonderful to have you back on our YouTube channel. My name is Gospel. And my name is Amara. Today we'll be considering something we think will be of a great value to a lot of single out there and also married people. Mm. And that is growing apart in marriage. One of the best relationship experiences many singles and even people who are married desire to enjoy to have that one and only person in their life with whom they will wake up every single morning, go to bed at night, knowing that she or he is there for them. Yes, like you're saying, I think successful and happy couples often see their partners as their best friend. Yes. Someone that will be there for them no matter what happens. Yes, absolutely. So when that is not the case, mm -hmm. when they are living together and things start drifting, yes. it means that they are growing apart. apart. Yes. And now we would, today we'll be considering, instead of having a conversation and educating ourselves on how can we, on, how can we recognize when this happens and how can we begin to navigate, you know, solving this problem, how can we begin to stick together mm -hmm. as a couple. So that's what we'll be, our conversation basically will be, will be touching on all of this today. Yeah, so if you're a new viewer and you're just joining us for the first time, please can you subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep your comments coming yes. and then like our video. Yes, we love to see that. One experience you don't want to have, maybe you're married out there or you're looking to Settle down. Settle down with someone yes. is to be in a relationship with someone that you can't feel that connection with the mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're living in the same house with your spouse, your husband, or, or wife, and there's this tall wall that exists between the two of you. Yes, it's not like it started that way, but mm -hmm. over time you discover that there is no free flow. Yeah, anymore. you drifted apart. Yes, that's not right for yes. any couple. Yeah. So you find out that in your relationship, there's no longer passion, yeah. you know, there's a lot more argument going on, mm -hmm. you know, every relationship, one, you know, once in a while, while yeah. there's argument, but now it's like the order of the day, constantly arguing and bickering at each other, yeah. criticism, or even silent treatment. Mm -hmm. So some people might decide, oh, I'm not speaking to her, or I'm not speaking to him, mm -hmm. kind of arrangement. Now, there's no phone, mm -hmm. there's no common interests, um, and even when you guys had common interests before now, mm -hmm. Um, you just suddenly find out that you no longer share those interests because there's a kind of wall between both of you. Yes. Now, each person is looking for ways of enjoying their lives or spending time with friends and colleagues rather than with each other. So basically, yeah. you're looking out rather than looking inwards. Inwardly, yes. yeah. That's not a good thing that happens in any marriage. So yes. today we'll be looking at how you can solve such problems Yes. in case you're in that situation. So the question now is, why exactly do couples grow apart? How is it that someone you've said you love so much, you've done your wedding and you've lived together, honeymoon and everything, Head over heels. so wonderful, yeah. yes. all of a sudden, or progressively, yeah. you've discovered that you're growing apart. The mm. question is why? Why? Why exactly? Well, I, I think there's a lot of reasons why this mm. happens. and. Um, the, the thing is that some people allow a lot of issues within the relationship to fester so much that it's kind of, it's ingrained into the fabrics of their relationship. Yeah. Now, the first thing we need to touch on mm -hmm. is the lack of physical presence. Present. Okay. Now, marriage cannot be done by proxy. Mm. And that's something we need to establish. You mm -hmm. need to be physically present for each other. If a partner spends more time away from home, mm -hmm. You know, this could create a lot of gap in the relationship and even in their sexual relationship. So there is an inability for them to be there physically to support each other. Now, imagine a woman whose love language is physical, physical touch, exactly. and the husband is not there physically. Yes. Either. Now, this can create lots of mm. issues in a relationship. Now, I know that there are some marital relationships where there's an arrangement where, you know, couples don't live together. Mm -hmm. However, you need to consider how would you make up for this well, lack of physical presence? Mm -hmm. Because I think that this is uh, the cross of problem in a lot of relationships. Okay. Like you are saying, again, the business of life can make a couple never have time for each other. Yes. For instance, absolutely. both of them are involved in different jobs where they spend all day at work and they come back very late, you know. Yeah. And when they are home, they are tired, yeah. you know. And when that happens, you see that they don't really have that communication like they used to. Yeah. Connection is no longer it's there. It's not there. Maybe mm -hmm. 
weekdays they are at work and everything. Yeah. Then during the weekend, some may be involved in social activities, religious activities. There are so much in crossing. So Extra many things happening. Extra curricular activities. Yes. And yes. where you have children, again, you have to take care of them, sort them out in different ways. So such couple don't have time for themselves anymore. Again. Yes. Yes. Even though they are physically present. They are not connected. Exactly. So that could make them grow apart. Yeah. So there's now a lot of heavy reliance on social media. Yeah. So you find a lot of them are now kind of like engaged in different platforms, spending the time with engaging with those media, mm. uh, social media platform rather than engaging with each other. Yeah. Because they no longer see the reason or because situation has put them um, in, in, a, in a kind of um, condition where they are no longer connecting yeah. with each other. Like I was saying something about weekend, you see a situation where a man has worked all week and during weekend, he now wants to play or watch football, football. or other games, you know? Yep. So the woman now wants to catch up with all the soap opera or TV shows that she didn't meet up with. Yes. So they are now physically present, but they are doing other things. Yes, yes. But not doing things together. Together, yes. That could yes. create that gap. Yes. If this happens over a long period of time, mm. gradually, gradually, the couple is going apart. Yes, emotions begin to chip away or mm -hmm. that emotional connection mm -hmm. begins to chip away. And do not forget that communication is a lifeblood of any relationship. Yeah. So if you guys are not communicating in a manner that, you know, every couple have a unique way that they understand themselves and they communicate. Now, if that's not happening in your relationship, then you would eventually go apart. And I think that this is counterproductive mm -hmm. for your relationship going forward. Yes. So the question now is, if this is the problem where physical presence has created that gap between a husband and wife, mm -hmm. even when they are present, yeah. they are engaging other things. Yes. What exactly do you think they should do? Well, I think that um, a lot of things would need to be done. So mm -hmm. first of all, you would need to create a routine together so go back to those things that you guys the fun times the moment that you guys enjoy having together allocate time exclusively for what both of you can enjoy doing mm. and i would say keep aside distractions like tv uh social media so kind of fiddling with your phone and maybe your children so maybe you might want to sort them out somehow maybe you know keep them with someone and just have like that unique time together mm. And also couples can engage in what I call date nights. Yeah, yeah. I like date nights. Yes, you know? date nights. When you have date nights, you know that no one is going to distract you. Yes. It's just you and your spouse. Yes. You have your time together yes. and enjoy yourself. Yes. And I'm saying, you know, consider these like moments when you guys were dating prior to, you know, getting married. married yeah. You know, discuss things that would help to enrich your Deep relationship. Things. Deep things. I mean... Not politics. No, no not politics. Not football. <laughs> not football. Not, not politics. Not, not superficial affairs. Yes. Engaging deep-level communication. Absolutely. Mm. So things that touch on your relationship. Mm. Maybe there are areas where you need improving mm. or she needs improving. And if this could create an opportunity for you to just talk about yourselves and just, mm. you know, uh, what are the needs that are met for me as a woman? And that this sort of gives me, provides me with a right opportunity to talk sure. with my husband about it. Okay. Another reason we consider very important is what we see as unmet needs, needs yes. or met emotional needs. Yes. And you see, when a partner feels that his or her emotional needs are not met within the context of the relationship, mm. he or she may consider meeting those needs elsewhere. Yes. And when that happens, there is that gap that exists between the two of them. Absolutely. You know? So now you are talking about the fact that this can lead to them going out. So yes. infidelity can yes. be a, a potential it be, problem. It could be one of those where a, a, a spouse is seeking affirmation, validation, mm. you know, you want to feel good within the context of your marriage mm -hmm. and you expect your spouse to do that. And it's not happening. And it's not happening. And then at the office, there is one guy who gives you that affirmation uh, and all that. Yes. So when you have issues, rather yes. than speak to your husband or wife, you go, you go to the that mm, person. Mm, mm. Before you know it, emotional bond starts building, building up. up. Yeah, and that's like... And you, 
feel disconnected from your spouse. Yes, and that's yeah. not healthy for the not relationship. At all. Not at all. So, and I think that couples will need to think about this carefully because yeah. when this begins to happen in a relationship mm -hmm. and potentially um, it creates more problems. Yeah, like I was saying, beyond having someone within your office or external person doing that, some people can rely on family members. Mm -hmm. I've seen a situation where a man, when he has any need, he calls the mom, yeah. speaks to the mom, tells the mom everything, mm -hmm. rather than the wife. Yes. Or some could use their friends. Yes. Or their siblings. Yes. So whichever way, it's not the right thing where there's an emotional gap yeah. in which you're looking for external person to fill such gaps. Like you yeah. said before about unmet needs, emotional needs. needs. Emotional yeah. needs. Now, mm. communication is one way that this is potentially going to happen. Yeah. So when you begin to drift apart mm -hmm. from your spouse in terms of the fact that you're no longer having an intimate conversation with your spouse um, at the level that is expected or mm -hmm. at the level that you used to engage with mm -hmm. him or her, and then this is a problem. Now you begin to find yourself sharing your deep feelings or your fears or whatever it is you used to share with your spouse with someone else. Mm -hmm. And now potentially you are no longer sharing it with your spouse and that shows that this speaks to the sign that you're growing apart mm -hmm. and the reason why couples grow apart is because they stop growing together and that's very important mm -hmm. growing together because communication can help enhance that communication can you know enable you mm -hmm. to grow together because you're de definitely sharing with each other mm -hmm. what your fears are and all the other things that i mentioned like you saying about growing together i think in terms of communication here yes i think that um when you share what is going on in your world yes your spouse the person knows about you the person knows about your world as yeah. well yeah so that helps two of you to think alike to see things hmm. in a similar way from the same perspective exactly so yeah. if you're not sharing one person is moving so there's a drift south, yes the other person is moving, moving north, north. Yeah. so I can't even know what you're doing. Mm. You don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah. So, sort of choose a part. Yeah, that's true. Now, drawing from what you said, mm -hmm. I just want to give an instance, you know, so that our viewers can kind of get this and put it in perspective. So, you get yourself like a couple that have just finished same level of education, mm -hmm. and one person decides to upskill himself, or one person decides to advance himself, his capabilities, and all of the things that come with that. Then the other person decides, oh no, I'm not going to do this, okay, I'm, I'm interested in other things, but not necessarily advancing himself. Mm -hmm. Now you find that, for instance, maybe it's the man who has done yeah, this. And usually you find it's the man, because the woman could be the one taking care, stay at home mom. Mom, yes. While the man is the one who gets the job because he needs to bring in more money to yes, the family. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And now you find that he's interacting at a level that is not at par anymore yeah. with the lady. And that, you know, there's no conscious effort. I'm not saying that staying at home or being a stay at home mom is, is wrong. You can be a stay at home mom and still love still yourself. Mm. Now there's a whole lot of difference and it's all about how you building yourself, advancing yourself to be able to communicate with this guy at the it's level. Intellectual level. Exactly. I think one of the things that makes this happen is that when the man is out there, yes. he's exposed to women who are intellectually high. Yes. So when he's exposed to them and he talks to them at that level, yeah. and when he gets home and he sees that it's a there's bit a disparity side. between yes. those women out there yeah. and the wife at home, mm -hmm. he can have a sense of, um, will I say, put off, so to speak. Or fulfillment, basically. Yeah. Or, mean, or the fact that there's something missing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That could even create a gap mm. that could lead to infidelity. Yes. Mm. So if this is the situation, what should they do? I think one of the things they need to do is to, whoever is growing intellectual, you should as well carry the other along. Encourage. Challenge that person, support that person, mm -hmm. encourage that person to upskill as well. Exactly. Because it's very important. Yeah. You know, if you don't do that, it could create that gap. Now let me make it a bit practical. Yeah. Now if it's the man or the woman that is advancing himself or herself, uh -huh. whatever it is, maybe it's books, mm -hmm. maybe there are courses, mm -hmm. whatever it is you're exposing yourself to, mm -hmm. you can share with the other person. Yeah, but when is the work? related advancement yes it might not necessarily involve the other person no. so I yeah, think, yeah cases where you can give somebody a book 
-hmm. and you can say to somebody maybe you've seen a lot of value in that book right yeah. you can give to somebody and that person will be able to read to get some does the person about. really want to read that's another thing mm -hmm. you need to ask mm -hmm. but i think whatever someone has interest in yeah there should be a level of, of, of skill that's what it is so yes. that you communicate at the same level it doesn't mean if you are a phd holder your mm -hmm. husband should have PhD as well. No, no. It doesn't no. mean that. What, what, what? And my understanding is that it's not about education. Yes, I wanted to put that caveat there it's because a lot education. of people are educated, but they are not the same level. They are not reasoning at a level that you expect. Yes. So education. Uh, let's education just put caveat. is subjective. Exactly. So let's leave that. Yes. So what I'm trying to say is that beyond the formal process of acquisition of knowledge yes there is that place where they should meet where they interact yes where they know what is happening in each other's world mm -hmm. when you know that on day-to-day -day basis it helps you to flow at the same level okay that's my view yeah so exposure to similar knowledge yeah is important and also interest interest as well. yeah so that person needs to be interested mm -hmm. in advancing mm. himself or herself yeah. yeah so you have common ground for communication exactly the third thing we need to touch on is a change in belief and value system yeah now when you started off when we started off mm -hmm. we you know i kind of like we share yeah. similar belief and, and the, value isn't yeah. it I think and, and that was one of the elements in the decision to get married to each other yes, yes. And, and i think for a lot of people out there is the same mm -hmm. so they make a lot of decisions so a lot of couples before they got married made their decisions based, based on, on their value values. system and that's what we even tell singles before you get married to someone make sure that there is a similarity in terms of mm -hmm. values and yes. belief system yes yes because this is this is very important mm -hmm. but then amazingly life is transient mm -hmm. so it's progressive yeah you know things change mm -hmm. there's a lot of dynamism to life mm -hmm. and the fact is that as people grow as well yeah. they also change mm -hmm. but what's one of the things that we feel that should be constant should be your value system and your belief but sometimes these also change yeah. in a relationship yeah. And I think that this this could be one of the reasons why people grow apart. Yeah. The fact that they're beginning to change, the values are beginning to change, the value system beginning to change, mm. and then no longer similar belief and value system as they started off with before mm. they got married. Yeah, like you're saying, let me give you an example. For instance, someone believes in God yes. before marriage. Mm -hmm. And I know, okay, fine, this person believes in God. Maybe this person have a, has a relationship with God. So yes. I'm marrying this person based on that principle. Yes. All of a sudden, this guy is telling the wife now that don't believe in God anymore. Oh. For a lady who has made her that decision as based a on that core value, I yes. think you're actually breaking the heart of a person. Yeah. Because the person believed you, trusted you. So. And believe, you know. And so it's all about like spiritual compatibility. And exactly. all of a sudden you say, you sorry. say no, I don't believe in God anymore. Mm -hmm. I see that happen a lot of times where young people, people, someone is married, all of a sudden you see someone say, he doesn't believe in God. There's no problem with you having different belief system. Yeah. But the key thing is, if that happens within the context of marriage and your spouse is not comfortable with that, yeah. it means conversations around faith, values, would not be similar anymore. Yeah. That could bring severe conflict. Yeah. So if I believe in God, you don't believe in God. So Imagine on Sunday I want to go to church. That's going to be a issue for us yeah. all the time. So yeah. we're constantly bickering at each other yeah. because I, 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 this... And you don't want your children to believe what I believe. Ah, yeah. Then that will be children getting involved. Now it becomes messy. So yeah. obviously they will grow apart yes. until that issue... Is resolved. is resolved well another reason i think is critical which couples may begin to grow apart is diminished sexual relationship mm. this is where you know when you they started could be once a day or three times a week yes you know, or even every day people, every day every day yes. yes for some people every day <laughs> and then all of a sudden progressively he moves to maybe twice a week. Yes. Maybe once a week. Once a month, maybe. Or yeah, once a month. And Some then it becomes ceremonial. Yeah, it becomes like 
once in a while. So for people to get to that point, yes, look at it. In fact, some psychologists or some counselors think that sexual relationship is an indicator of the level of intimacy between a husband and, and a wife. wife. Yes, and I and I think that this is very important because if you have um, a lot of couples growing apart in their sexual life then I think that they need to evaluate why this is the case. Mm. And, you know, a situation whereby probably the man just have sex just because he wants to be satisfied or the woman is just giving sex, just the, the fact that, oh, I don't want my husband to say I'm not satisfying him. Yeah. Or he might pick on it as a reason to go out mm. there. So you're just doing it just for, for the sake. Obligation. It's just then, an obligation. Yeah. Then mm. I, I think that then it's, it's a big it's a problem. problem. And then it really needs to be evaluated as to what are the causes, why is this happening, and how can we rekindle our sexual life. Yeah. Because if they, if they don't do that, what happens is that little things begin to cause severe conflict. Yes. Well, I want to say that whatever be the case. Yes. Couples out there need to realize that relationship is like a living organism. Yeah. You either allow it to grow, it either is growing or it's dying. Mm. If you allow it to a default mode and let it slide, yeah. it's not going to work out. Yes, yes. So what you need to do is keep working on it. Mm. Don't let it stagnate. Yeah. Take loving actions to rekindle your love and affection for each other so that you don't grow apart rather mm. you grow together yes mm. yeah and, and i think that this is it's very important for anybody i mean if you love somebody you just want that person to stick with you like i yes. love my husband yes. <laughs> he's becoming very touchy today <laughs> i want to say that it starts with a heart-to-heart -heart communication very like much. just get down to it like can we just talk about this thing what is exactly happening to our relationship mm -hmm. share your feelings share your thoughts with each other about your relationship mm -hmm. and then come up with a workable plan mm. in order for you guys to get back on course yeah. because you enjoy your company obviously you do but i would say don't make it too complex just mm. start from somewhere mm. life, is, life is complex as it is yes. so don't let your relationship add to the complexities of, of life, life. Wow, it is great to have had you all like engaging with us today on our channel. I cannot just emphasize, you know, how valuable your time is to us, you know, clicking on our videos. We do appreciate this. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with our content. If you're new to our channel, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell. And please put your comments below. Tell us what you think. Maybe we've missed out something. Why do you think couples grow apart? And, and how, how do can you they work on it to grow together? Together. And we would just want to hear your thoughts as well. So please put your comments in the comment section below. And until the next time we see you, it's goodbye from us. Bye. Bye.